Hey everybody and welcome back. In this video we're going to carry on with our game engine. Before I get started though I wanted to say that I've made some adjustments because I had a couple of errors that cropped up. So the first thing that I had to do was to retype this whole area so pause the video now and just check that your game engine reads the same as these lines here. Just make sure that they're all correct to this video and then in the screens.rpi file I've actually removed the elif statement from here and I've changed it to just if not main menu and then that should resolve any issues that you've had. One other thing I just wanted to quickly say is thanks ever so much for your support on this series it has been very good to read your comments and the feedback has been really good already and we're only in episode three so that's good news. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a couple of screens which we're going to use as hints. So what we want to do is in our browser on the left hand side here we're going to go into our screens folder and we're going to create a new file and this one's going to be called touch screen. So tt screen.rpy and we just hit return there. So we're going to create a screen and it's going to be called touch screen and we're going to close our brackets there. What we're going to do with this screen though is we're actually going to take an argument and the argument is just going to be called a tip, just nice and easy. And what this means is that when we call this screen we actually pass an argument in in the brackets and then that argument we can use in the screen. So we'll just hit enter there. And this is going to be nice and simple. We're going to create a drag and we're going to call the drag with drag underscore name and we're just going to call it hint. We're going to set it to y align 0.5. We're going to set it to x align 0.5. Well, and then we're going to set the drag handle and we're going to set that to 0, 0, 0.0 to 1.0, 1.0. That just means that we can click anywhere in the window. Make sure we put commas in the correct places. It means we can click anywhere inside the window and we'll be able to drag it. Next, inside our draggable window, we're going to create a frame like so, and we're going to set the X padding to 25, and we're going to set the Y padding to about 30. Then we're going to set the X align to 0.5 and the Y align to 0.5 as well. Now we're going to create maximum and minimum sizes or no, let's just do maximum sizes just to make sure that the window doesn't get any bigger. Then we'll say X maximum is going to be 610 and we have to make sure we spell maximum correctly. There we go. And then we're going to say Y maximum is going to be uh, 400. So 600 by 400 or thereabouts is good. And we're going to say that it has a V box. Oh, goodness me, I'm having finger trouble today. And the label of that is going to be hint x minimum. Oh my god. There we go. Is going to be 400. And we're going to say text tip. So what we're doing is just uh, I've typed done a lot of typing now. Let's talk you through what we've done so far. So we're going to create a draggable window, and it's going to just be named hint and it's going to have it's going to appear in the middle of the screen and the handle is going to be the entirety of the window basically inside that window we're going to create a frame it's going to have padding of 25 and 30 the text is going to align or sorry the the frame is going to align in the middle of that window and we're setting it to have a maximum size of 610 by 400 now we've created a v box inside our frame and it's got an X minimum of 400. So the minimum size this window can be across the screen is 400 pixels and the maximum is going to be 610. Now we've put our text into it. So we've taken our argument here and we've basically put it into our window. That's great. So now we're gonna create a button. We need to be able to close it and we're gonna put some text in. Now I'm gonna use a font that I've already put into my GUI folder, but you can download whatever font and use whichever font you want. So we're gonna have here font equals GUI forward slash fonts forward slash, and I'm gonna use this font like that. 
and I'm going to give it a color of all white, which is FFFFFF. I'm going to give it a size of 12. And now the text itself is just going to read close. And then we're just going to say close the font. Cool beans. So now we want to set our background to a color. I'm going to set it to a, a low gray like that. I'm going to give it some padding of about three pixels. I'm going to give it some X padding as well. Uh, 14 pixels could be anything around that. I'm literally just plucking numbers out of thin air right now. X align is going to be 1.0. Y align is going to be 1.0. And it's action when you click on it is simply going to be return. And there's a reason for that. So basically, this screen will basically be called in the same way that any other screen is called. And to close that screen, you need to return something. In this case, we're returning nothing because all we want to happen is the screen to disappear. So we should be able to run that and that will work. And this is our touch screen. So whenever we want a tutorial or a game hint to appear, all we do is we call this screen and put whatever text we want into these brackets inside quotation marks, of course. And we can test that if we go into our scripts.rpy and if we were to say something along the lines of close that and I come into my while I'm in my while loop still so if I say call screen and then we say tut screen and then we create our brackets and inside we create some quotation marks and we're going to say this is a test screen and then we're going to say backslash n which is code for new line and then we're going to say this is a new line on our test screen and then we're going to save that so here we are and we just got this christine saying hi or bye so if we say bye there we go we should now see this is a test screen this is a new line on a test screen and if we click it we should be able to drag it anywhere in the screen we want and it will stay there and then if we hit close it will close out and it will end our loop happy days so that's our first screen done the next screen that we're going to create is going to be very similar, but this one's going to be a persistent screen that will stay on the screen. And this is what we're going to use for game tips. Basically, if the player is struggling to find out what to do next, we can put a clue in this window. It's going to be toggleable from the top menu. So you'll click on it and it'll open it. If you click on it again, it'll close it. Uh, but if they don't, they will, it will just stay on the screen and it will show them whatever the relevant tip is for the stage in the game that they're in. So again, in our screens folder, we're going to create a new file again. And this one's going to be called tipscreen.rpy. We'll hit return there. Cool. So we create our screen and it's going to be tipscreen. And this one is also going to have a property passed into it called tip. Now we want to say drag and we're going to basically copy the same kind of stuff that we did before. So drag on it's got name, it's going to be hint and it's going to have an X align of 0.5 and a Y align of 0.5. Drag handle is also going to be the whole thing again. So drag underscore handle, open brackets, 0 comma 0 comma 1.0 comma 1.0 inside there we're going to create a frame and inside that frame we're going to put some padding so x padding is going to be 25 y padding is going to be 30 again then we're going to say x align 0.5 y align 0.5 uh, x maximum yep thought about it that time and it's going to be 610 as you can see the, pr the properties are basically identical It's going to be 400 has a V box and the label is going to be hint again X maximum of 400 and then text tip and that is that screen done if you notice there's no button to close in this screen so it literally just it's going to be something that'll sit there you can toggle the help on and off using a button in the top bar when we create that one and that will give us the ability to put a tutorial within this 
uh, this screen basically. So I think that about wraps it up for this episode. In the next one we'll be working on more screens. Thanks ever so much for watching, I mean that genuinely, sincerely. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I will see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, alright guys? Bye bye.